we've got a right couple of high rollers here. A blast around Hertfordshire and the county of Essex awaits, but we're building up to a mighty auction showdown at Bourne in Lincolnshire. But first, we all have a shopping date at Potter's Bar. Oh, 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 oh. Look. There we go. What is that? I want to run in there. Where's your pick? <laughs> Someone's keen. <laughs> Inside Canonbury Antiques, there's a veritable feast for the eyes. From big angry bears to lots of chairs. <laughs> Father and daughter each have 400 big ones. Let the good old mooch begin. Cop for that lizard, look. I know plenty of lizards. I'll tell you that now. It's a nutty looking thing. In, in antique times, it's a nutty bit of kit. Noted. Our founts of antique knowledge, aka Tash and Phil, are already having a good old rummage around. Don't suppose you've got any chairs to sell, have you? Hey, you should be on stage, Phil. <laughs> oh, Natasha. How are you, my darling? You're playing with some ponies. I'm so buzzed to meet you. Are you kidding? You're you instantly going straight into Cockney rhyming slang. No, you literally have got a couple of ponies in your hand, and a pony is obviously rhyming slang. For remind me. Twenty-five quid. Is this a good gaff? Would you say? I think answer? it's great. You have to do all the haggling. Okay. Please, please, I need to see you in action. <laughs> Let's go. Let's have it, girl. Right. Let's have it. Elsewhere in the shop, what are Danny and Phil pot up to? Go out, right, Phil. Oh, hi, how are you? <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, you, you must be done. What are you doing? Oh, it's just, just a moment. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to talk about antiques? I'm not a professional like you, actually, no. Like who? But you I love an antique. Oh, right, here I am. Come on, off you go. All right, let's go. Comedy Central with Phil today. What have you found, little Dan? I like this car. Why? There's just something different about it. it looks very old. Okay. Is it old? How old do you think it is? 60 years old. It's 1920s. It's marble. Yeah. So it's kind of what we call our deco period. What's really fun about this, right, is that when I started in work, mm. I won't tell you when that was, but things like this weren't really that old. You know, this is like 100 years old now. Wow. So that is old. Thanks for that. Why do you like it? I just feel like it just stands out. It's an unusual clock. You don't really see clocks like that now. No. Would you have it in your home? I would. Really? I think I would. That's Not in my main room, but it would be in a room. You love it that much, do you? It doesn't have a ticket price, so one to add to the potentials, maybe. <laughs> You're having a nice time, Dad. Weird, isn't it? I've been freaked out by these chairs, to be honest. So watch your nut on these chairs. How are you getting on? Oh, you are taking this seriously, aren't you? No. There's a lot of steak between me and you, a bullseye and... And a Chinese a with crispy duck. A big Chinese. A big Chinese. Almost a banquet. A feast. You know, 80 quid little Chinese. <laughs> oh, it's going for the 80 quid. On your way. See you later. I've clocked something over there. 80 quid's worth of Chinese? <laughs> now, what's this? What a nutty bit of kit that is, Tash. Do you Talk know what it is? Uh, I know that's a prison. Mm -hmm. That is a scientific instrument. Yeah. It looks very late 19th century. Do you see a maker anywhere? Uh, du Bosque. That's a great maker. French, late 19th century, if I remember correctly. The scientific instruments market is, believe it or not, very hot. I know it's the kind of thing that people want to have on their desk. I don't know what I'll do with it. It must have something to do with the colour spectrum and being a glass prism. But look how nibbled that glass is. It must be the original glass. So the maker you said, Dubosk, is absolutely what will sell this. Jules Dubosk was a 19th century French instrument maker. His company was the go-to firm for the leading scientists of the day. It doesn't have a ticket price, but it looks like a strong possible. Dealer Amy is first to experience the Danny Dyer haggle. Stand by. Good gaff. Thank you very much. Tell you cheers. Yep. Uh, Amy, uh, this is a proper little thing, this, isn't it? How much is this uh, little bit of get up? It's 80 pounds. 80 quid. It right, is. Right. Any chance I could nick it off you, not nick it, 30 quid? I need it higher than no, that. Right. Okay, what, 40 quid? I don't want to take liberties. Let's say 50 pounds. Okay, so a bullseye? 
A bullseye, 50 quid, yeah? 50. Thank you so 50 much. Yeah. Well, we'll have yeah. that, yeah? We'll have it. Thanks, baby. Bless you very much. Hopefully, I'll make a few quid on that. There's your bullseye. Good luck. Let's slip off, Tash. Farewell. Ta-da, babe. Bye. Thank you, Amy. Ta-da, Thank babe. you so That's much. That's okay. Thank you. With one nutty buy down and £350 left, I can't wait to see what else Danny chooses. Look at that glass That's catching the saying. light. All the colours. That's what I'm saying, mate. That's how we roll. We do bock. <laughs> right, jump in. Ugh. Let's do the slips. There we go. We're prism nuts. Back inside, how's little Dan getting on? Have a look at those. Tell me what you think. I don't love them. Right. What are they? They're a pair of urns that would have sat either side of a clock. Oh. So you'd have a mantel clock, and with those either side, you'd call it a clock garniture. Probably above your fireplace. Absolutely spot on. And they're made out of marble and ormolu. Ormolu is gilded brass, which is the kind of the metal on there. But, I mean, there's a rough rule of thumb, although it's not obvious. If you look at that little screw that's holding it all together in the bottom, yeah. that, that has shown a bit of age, isn't it? Yeah, it even smells old, doesn't yeah. it? They're probably turn of the last century. They're nice, actually. And the fact that they're old, I like that. Yet another item without a price. Any top tips for haggling, old geese? So, £45 for those two, £45 for the clock. Oh, I can do that. Can you? I've done loads of boots house. Yeah. Can you really? Mm. Martin! All right, Phil. I'm going to unleash you to the power of little Dan. Do you want it in good? Right, Martin, I love the shirt. Thank like, you, that's kind of you. Basically, we're going to buy, are they, what are they called? Little urns. We're going to buy these little urns, and there's a really lovely clock over there. No, a really nasty clock over there. A really nasty Don't clock yeah. over there. And we're going to buy both of them for £90. So if I say, um, for the two pieces, £120... How does that grab you? I'm really sorry, Martin. We're um, only going to go to keep to 90. Even by the £100. No, that's no. not 90, is it? It's not 90. I'll take it off you. Love you, Martin. You're welcome. Good golly, she's a chip off the old block. £45 for the Art Deco mantle block and £45 for the pair of 19th century urns. Nice going, Danny. That leaves you with £310. Crikey. Onward and upward. Come on, Phil, I'm taking you on a date. That'll do, mate. <laughs> <laughs>